haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to answer the question on your own before listening on. For part A, in order to determine the speed of this object as it reaches its lowest point, we're going to use the conservation of energy. And to do that, we need to identify the types of energy that are initially present and then also that are finally present once the object reaches its lowest point down here. Now, initially, because the object is released from rest, the only energy that is present is the gravitational potential energy. And so we can call that U sub G. When the ball reaches its lowest point, all of that gravitational potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. And according to the principle of conservation energy, that initial gravitational energy is going to equal the final kinetic energy. Now we know that gravitational potential energy is equal to mass times G times the height, and then kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass times the speed of the object squared. Because mass appears on both sides of the equation, we can algebraically eliminate it. We can multiply both sides of the equation by two so that we have two GY is equal to V squared, and then we'll take the square root of both sides, and this will allow us to solve for the speed of the object as it reaches its lowest point. We can go ahead and plug in 9.8 for G, and then for the height, which we've called Y, that would simply be the entire length of the string. And that was given to us in the question in centimeters. We just have to convert that into meters. So in this case, the height would be 1.20 meters. So we'll plug that in for Y. And once we simplify that, we should get approximately 4.85 meters per second. So this would be the speed of the object as it reaches its lowest point and is therefore the correct answer to part A. Now on to part B, and in order to understand how to answer this question, we have to clarify what exactly is going on. So once again, the ball is going to start from rest at the highest point up here. And as it swings down, it's gonna kind of move in this fashion, and the string here is gonna catch on this peg. So what's gonna happen next is the ball, after the string catches on that peg, is gonna to continue to swing upward in a circular path like this. And then right about there, it's going to reach its highest point. So we're going to call this point over here the initial. And then when the ball wraps around that peg, or when the string wraps around that peg and the ball travels up here, we're going to call that point the final point. We can use energy conservation once again. Initially, the only energy that's present is the gravitational potential energy. So we would have the mass times G times the length of the string. And then we can set that equal to the energy that's present here. Now there's two forms of energy present here because presumably the ball is still moving. We can put little swoosh marks on it to show that it's moving. And so there's going to be kinetic energy once again, so the one half mass times the speed squared plus gravitational potential energy because the object is still located above its lowest point. So there's going to be some gravitational potential energy there. We can call that mass times G, and we'll call that height Y final. And we're gonna actually have to find that final height. And that becomes a little bit challenging, but if we look at the diagram carefully, it's not too bad. Remember, we know that this length right here is the entire length of the string, which was the 1.2 meters. And we also know that this distance right here it was actually marked D in the original figure. That's 0.75 meters. And if we subtract the 1.2 meters by the 0.75 meters, that's gonna give us this height right here. And so that would turn out to be 0.45 meters. But notice that the ball, as it travels in this circular path, is located not at the 0.45 meters, but actually twice that because it's swinging all the way up to here. In essence, this height right here is the diameter of this circular path. And since the radius of that circular path is 0.45, the diameter would be 0.9. So that height to which the ball rises is going to be the 0.9 meters. And so that's what we'll end up plugging in for here. Now mass appears in each term so we can eliminate it And then we can solve the equation for the speed v. Let's subtract the g, y, f over to the other side. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by 2, so we can eliminate the 1 half on the right side, and then we'll take the square root so that we have the speed isolated. And then we can plug in. Remember, 
L is the full length of the string, 1.2 meters, and then that YF we determined was 0.9 meters, and G is 9.8. And when we punch that into our calculators, we should get roughly 2.42 meters per second. And so this would be the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. Send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.